like to dine out, let me tell you, you're on the right channel. Hi everyone, my name is Peter Dills. And I'm Mike Bingley. Welcome to Straight Off the Menu, not your average food show. No, we go to restaurants all over Southern California. Oh yes we do. And you know what makes the show nice? I don't like some of the things Peter likes and vice versa. You know, Mike loves a Long Island iced tea. And Peter loves champagne. Straight off the menu. You know what? That's not champagne and this is not a Long Island iced tea. <laughs> I guess it just is where we're at in the day, huh? <laughs> it's just where we're at. And I know where we're at. We're at Rocco's Tavern here in Old Pasadena, uh, live to tape. And uh, good to see you. Really well, actually, we are all. live. Uh, this is live, not live to tape. But we were, I had to correct you on that. Okay. Back in my days, live to tape meant we're live to tape. But we are live on Facebook. But we will be live on other channels, which we won't talk about right now. But uh, come down and enjoy a uh, watermelon mojito with myself and uh, some bitters with uh, my friend Peter, bitters and soda, I guess. I think he's got a little bit of a tummy ache, so. Uh, well, they're celebrating this thing with, it's called the uh, Long Beach Restaurant Week. Uh huh. And we had a restaurant in from uh, Long Beach yesterday called Naples, uh, Ribs of Naples. And I've never eaten so much barbecue in my life. And I'm barbecued out, my friend, I am barbecued out. So they're celebrating uh, Restaurant Week in Long Beach. If you're down on Long Beach, check it out. Uh, but I'm just, you know, do you ever get that where you just had enough steak? Yeah. Oh, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the Brazilian barbecue, that's a good, uh, you know, that's a good example. We've all been to those uh, Brazilian barbecue places where, you know, you turn the little cube over yep. red to green. Red to green, yeah. And you just end up stuffing yourself. But the trick they try to do is they try to get you to eat all the salad and everything. No, so, no, no way. But then, they, of course, they bring you the cheap sausages first. A lot of them do. Some of the good ones don't. They don't play that game. But... And then by the time the filet mignon comes, you ah, you turn that thing over to red. You don't want any more. So, well, you know, anyway, you know, you and Teresa travel a lot of places in that big RV of yours. Yes. And you're usually going up north, right? Most of the time. Well, yeah, I'm not going south. No, yeah. but we're yeah. going south right now. Yeah, we are going south right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we're really yeah. going south right now. Yeah, we are. We're yeah. going to Wilson Creek in yeah. Temecula. <laughs> uh, well, uh, what, what is Wilson Creek? Tell, well, tell me. Actually, about it. it's it's the amazing part about the story is it's a uh, it's a winery in Temecula, uh -huh. and they're actually their roots are from South Pasadena. Oh, from Wa? Uh, just from from Wa. They're about Ooh. they started in South Pasadena, the Wilson family, and they uh, bought a chateau, I guess, down in Temecula, and they bought uh, they they make wine down there. Well, that's oh that that their vineyard is that? Uh, yep, that's their vineyards. Uh, producer Paul Mari went down there. And took a whole bunch of shots for us, and we had brunch. And uh, I guess it pays to work for the straight off the menu because all he did is name drop Mike Bentley. What's the Mike brunch Bentley. there? What's that? Well, What's Paul Murray is here, well, so if we can get the microphone, Paul, Paul, you Paul Murray, quickly uh, tell us about Temecula. Yeah, Paul, hold on, bring while your microphone here. While we're looking look. at the photos, uh, Paul Murray, the producer of here the you show. Go, Paul. Uh, what, what, where, where is? And hold it up there. And, yeah. Uh, you, you know the usual questions. Where is Wilson Creek? It's down in Temecula off of Rancho California Avenue off of 15, um, all the way at the end. That's Paul Murray. Um, He's a tall guy, too. Yeah, Paul Murray. Yeah. And thin. The guy <laughs> drinks yeah. every single day. Budweiser, too. You can't believe. Look how thin he is. He doesn't even have a junior party ball. What's and up with he, that? He, you know? All he does is drink all day. Yeah. I mean, he eat real well, too. And he eats, yeah. Uh, obviously. So okay, Wilson Creek here. What do we got? So this is okay. This is yeah, good, so by the way, we got the bottle. This, this is what I've never even right heard now. of it. And I'm a wine. Supposedly, I'm a wine critic. I've never heard of a white Cabernet Sauvignon. So hmm. it's in a blue bottle, which is again something that you don't see every day. And I imagine this type of bottle would be something that's available at the winery. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I brought that one. Okay. That's very so tasty. That was, that was a, I think, around a twenty-three dollar bottle. So I'm guessing that you take the, the you take the skin off. Are they taking the skin off the uh, grape, and then whatever's left over makes a. I'm actually going back at the end of the to month to get the answer. <laughs> at the end of the month, um, they start their harvesting around 10, 11 o'clock at night and run through early morning mm -hmm. to do their harvesting. So I'm going to actually be going down in about another month. To, so do you help them out that. with the you help them out with the harvest? You know, you bring your tweezers. Yeah, you know, I'm going to bring yeah, I'm going to bring my tweezers and uh, grab a couple. Or do you of just taste? 
You just taste, you know, you just make sure everything is, you know, up to uh, par? Or? I'm not a, a real wine drinker myself. You're not so a wine nose, which you no, gonna Not like my friend Peter. I'm, I'm going to bring back the grapes and let you taste them. Hey, I'll, I'll go for that. I'll go for that. So, yeah. Wilson Vineyard down in Temecula, uh, different varieties. I know they make a Wilson Creek almond. That's what I that, thought you were bringing. That's what they're famous they're for. They're famous for their almond. When actually, when yeah. they bought the winery, that, uh, that particular uh, wine came with it. Yeah, they got that. For, uh, it's almond. A, it's uh, an uh, almond it's sparkling wine. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. You said almond. I thought maybe they no. made almonds. Okay, uh, okay, almond sparkling wine. Okay, it's cool. Only only place I've ever seen make it is down in Wilson Creek in Temecula. Yeah, can you buy this around here? I mean, what, uh, I don't it, think this one you can. I know at the Wilson Creek, the Wilson Creek. Uh, I'm sorry, the Wilson Creek almond sparkling mm. wine. Ralph's, Vaughn's, everybody has it. It's okay, pretty, okay. It's pretty common. So Wilson Creek is in your supermarkets around yeah, here. In the, absolutely. Okay, very good. That's what we want to know. Cool. Right. Any other photos or did we run through everything? I think we That there was we it. Got. Good job, Paul Thank Murray. you, Paul. Appreciate it. Yeah, it pays. So we got Paul Mari now on the, uh, the non-paying yeah. uh, uh, producing staff. Him and then Eric Chan and Eric Dean Chan. Lee. Yeah, where's Eric Chan? He's not here today. Oh, no, he's know? right there. Oh, there's Eric. I didn't see. He just snuck in on me there. He didn't, he didn't yeah, bring Dean, any photos. Can I give you so. this over here? Yeah. So, you know, Peter, I guess, uh, you know, what else do you have here? Okay. So, I, um, I do like sushi, but I do not love sushi. You like sushi? <laughs> no, I'm not going to go there. I won't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I left my rubber finger at home. Uh, anyway, darn okay, it. all right. I, I do like sushi, but I don't love sushi, meaning mm -hmm. that I'm not going to drive anywhere around the world, anywhere around Southern California, just to find the best sushi restaurant. Yeah. A friend of mine, his name is Luther Kwok, works actually for Panda Inn, has been working for Panda Ooh. Inn for 25 years, calls me and says that I, he, that I got to come up to Sierra Madre and try this place called Yu Sushi. Oh, local here. Local Y-U-I. And here's the thing about this place, Mike. In the last 10 years, you know how they say that some, some restaurant locations are just bad real estate or cursed? Right. This place has been seven different restaurants in 10 years. A hot dog place, it's been a sushi oh, place. Oh, my, my hot dog place that I slammed that they cut me off. Okay, yeah. Went yeah. there at eight o'clock on a Saturday. Oh no, we're closed. Yeah. Okay. No exact location. Business. Okay. Hopefully they're open past eight o'clock. Th this guy on his menu, and I, br I did bring the menu. It's around here somewhere. This guy is is uh, only takes one day a week off. Personally, goes down to the fish market himself to get the fish in the morning. Uh, Jap I'd call it Japanese fusion because it's so much more than just sushi. But on the menu, it's kind of funny. Uh, he does say that they close at eight or nine, but if you call in advance, he'll stick around for you. I mean, that's how much he's into it, and that's how much I want him to succeed, because I know in that particular location, it's been so many disasters. Beer and wine? Uh, beer and wine, of course, Sapporo. Cool, okay. Sake. All right. All right, here okay. we go. Oh, yeah, All right, so that is the tuna spicy hand roll. Mm -hmm. Uh, just uh, as an appetizer, and, I got And the it. Sapporo, of course. Yeah, yeah, you see that, yeah. right? Beautiful Sapporo. <laughs> you might just yeah. see a Sapporo. I think I see it sweating, as a matter of fact. <laughs> All you right. Know, and in anticipation is, of you devouring it. And that's yeah. the uh, a fatty albacore, which is basically close to a tuna. Okay. And a little... Uh, now, I notice there's one on there. Does that mean when you order sushi, they, they just give you one piece? Because most places you go to, they give you, you order uh, like a fatty albacore, they'll give you two pieces. Right. So, well, I was with somebody. Oh, oh, okay. So that what I'm just showing you is what oh, my part of okay, it. Okay, all right. But they've got lunch specials there for under twenty dollars, which you might think, oh, that's a lot of money, but not really for sushi. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I talk about Jin Sushi a lot, and I like it. They're really fun uh, there, and they you know make mm -hmm. all the noise, mm -hmm. and they take the shots of sake, mm -hmm. and they they have yeah. fun. Yeah. This guy's a little bit more serious. Yeah. yeah. But I got to tell you, Mike, it is dynamite. And again, I am not. A huge sushi fan, but I gotta say this is the best sushi I'm restaurant. Give, I'm gonna give it a try. Are they are they fair in their pricing? Uh, yeah, again, it's not outrageous. Everything's under twenty okay. bucks, but you can get lunch specials. Okay. And they do things. Uh, I didn't thought I brought the menu, but they have things that are I've never seen in a Japanese now, now restaurant. Now, was it before. real cramped in there? I mean, you, uh, you remember the way it was when I, it was the I don't, hot dog I don't place. recall actually because it's, they wouldn't let me in, remember? Oh, so, oh, know. it's half yeah. the size here. It's half the size of Broncos. Okay, so that so you can get in and Yeah, it's, uh, it's, all right. yeah but I'm talking okay. about no, 
not a group of eight, not a group of 12. You want to go in there with two or four or six people. Okay, good. A little Very bit good. of patio. You know, you can sit out oh, in front. Oh, okay, all right. But this have, is Sierra Madre. This is Sierra Madre. The address is 24 West wow. Sierra Madre Boulevard in Sierra Madre. Closed Mondays, which is today. Yeah, they're pretty the typical. Were, yeah, yep, pretty typical. And the guy needs a day off. Uh, prices are reasonable. I know a lot of times you say prices are right. Yeah. Eh, I'm going to go prices are reasonable. Uh-huh, yeah. And it's called... Uh, you Sushi. You Sushi. And it's up on Sierra yeah. Madre. Okay. And uh, I just wrote about them in the Sierra Madre newspaper. Okay. And I want them to succeed real bad because this guy... God bless him, he put his whole life savings. Well, I'm gonna check place. them out. I'm gonna check, you know, I went to uh, Ichima Sushi, uh -huh. you know, up there by Robbins up right. there. Uh, and uh, I, I love them, but it's always just packed and crazy and loud, but there's a reason, because they're reasonable and their sushi's good, and so. You know what I like yeah. about that place? Hmm. I don't know how they do it, especially with the minimum wage going up. Got a lot of people working there. Service. 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 They're all over you, the you place. You know what I have to say, again, I, I'm talking about, uh, uh, what am I talking about? Ichiban. Uh, it, it, no, Ichima. Yeah, Ichiban. Ichima. Ichima. Well, I thought you said Ichiman. No, Ichima. 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 All right. Ichima. You Ichima. Know? Ichima. Ichima. Anyways, they bring you a bottle of water, you know, with a little cap on there and stuff, and it's kind of it, it's kind of foo foo y you know. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I just kind of like what they do, and they always take care of you. You know, you're not even done with the plate they're taking it away. Right. And that's what I've experienced bring in a lot of sushi else. places, you know. <laughs> so, uh, say so what? I'm yeah. making a joke. Joke. Hey. Hey, um, you, a little bit later in the show, you're going to introduce us to Jesus, I hear. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. No, okay. no, actually it's Jose. Oh, Jose. Jose Hernandez. Ah. And I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, I'll just tell you real quickly, this guy turned me on to some really cool uh, uh, corned beef tacos. Anyways, we'll get to that in a bit. But what do you, what do you got there? You got some other uh, courtyard uh, bar and grill? Uh, what, what's that all about? You know? Well, we got uh, Peter's Mexican dish, which is actually a burrito. Oh, you got Peter's from, Mexican? I see. From, we, we, uh, Where, where's this from? This is from Nikki C's. Nikki, Nikki C's, C's grill. It's over there on a burrito the, from a from Italian place. Well, this is actually a breakfast burrito that they do uh, for their Sunday brunch. So if you've driven by Nikki C's, they yeah. got that sign, mimosas and tortilla chips. Let me see. Tortilla chips. So this is actually from Nikki C's. It's a breakfast burrito. And producer Paul wants me to get it right. It's actually not a breakfast burrito, it is a brunch burrito. It's a brunch burrito. It's a brunch burrito. Seared filet, broken yeah. fried egg, avocado, jack cheddar, yeah, applewood bacon, tater yeah. tots. I guess he ate yeah. the tater tots on the way over here. Oh, yeah? What he did to me yesterday also. So but I'll get into that So later. are we supposed to have a little of this? Yeah, or what? have a little of this. Oh, it's got a little it's steak a in there. And, yeah, okay. I'll get the end cut here. This is, this is the end cut, right, Peter? Okay. Is that what you call the end cut? Yeah. It's your, you know, it's your last cut. Yeah. Mm. Very good. Mmm. Nice. What's the price of this, Paul? $10. All right. Mmm. So, $10. $10. So basically, Nikki C's has a brunch menu, not a breakfast menu, a brunch menu with mimosas and... Man, when you say brunch, this is generally... Straight on a weekend. Off the menu. No, this is on a weekend, right? Oh, I like that. Straight off the menu. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you're not going to go, they don't have um, chafing dishes or anything like that. You order off the menu. Mm. Oliver, this would set you free, let me tell you. Yeah. You know. uh oh, yeah. power to the people. I don't know if the pork will do you right, though. Mm. Mm. Hey, good. Hey, Very kudos. Good. Kudos to Nikki C's. Yeah. Yeah. And they're in Rosemead, and we've talked about them before. Uh -huh. Paul Mari was well, so they, kind to bring this in for us. They keep on bringing us food. You know, mm -hmm. the only people that bring us food are uh, Philippe's and uh, Nikki C's. Mm. And I know Richard Bender's watching right now. I love Richard Bender. He's a great guy. Yep. Yeah, had great product. Still hasn't taken us on the boat. Well, give him time, you know. Give Can I time. give him a sh shameless plug? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you will, because you're kind of a shameless guy. So what's this all about? So anyway, AM870, the answer. It's a talk radio station here in LA. Actually, they're in Glendale, but they cover Los Angeles. And I'm gonna be starting there in a couple weeks on Saturdays. I'm still doing my show in Orange County, but I noticed that in Orange County, I'm not getting phone calls from up here in Pasadena, Glendale, Burbank. Mm -hmm. So I added this station. So kind of the same thing, be easier for you to call in and get over there. And this there is and all KRLA? That. KRLA AM 870. Now, K 
Sierra. I know. Away. Back in the day, it was music. Well, that's what all I listened to. H Huggy, I had my Huggy Amory, Yeah, Huggy Bear, and yeah. I don't know if you way back there was Emperor Hudson back no. in the day. Bob Eubanks. No, but I'm talking back in the six, probably before your time, you know, because yeah, I know you're kind of a youngster here, you know. <laughs> no, you. but it's all those, uh, you Wolfman Jack, yep, you yep. know. Yep. Wolfman Jack, wasn't he on KROA? Yeah, back so, in the 60s. But, but now, it's not that way. No, or... it's, a, it's a talk station now. Okay. So we'll be on Saturdays Okay, there. enough of this shameless plug. I'm going to turn around so people can't see it, you know. <laughs> no, I won't do that to you. But uh, so what else we got here, Peter? Well, it uh, looks like it's your turn. Oh, it's my because, turn. Because uh, Jim wanted you to be organized. Oh, yeah. You should see yeah. this. If we could show a picture. Of, well, anyway. I, I showed it already. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, it, it's, um, it's like cue cards hanging from the yeah. light. But awesome. anyways, I got to tell you, you know, I've been out of town. I've been camping up in Bridgeport, California. And I uh, befriended this guy. His name is, uh, what the hell is his Jose. name? Jose. Yeah. yeah. Not Jesus. It's yeah. Jose. I, I Jose, Jose. Her he, Hernandez. He, he per he's perched on top of the uh, flag tower up there. Because I, I say to him, oh, Jose, can you see? There's Jose oh, there right there. Is. Jose right there. And, yeah. and he, they, we're camping, okay? That's his, that's his trailer. His wife and kids are, are there. And just lovely people. And he has this, this uh, griddle out there. And what he does is he, he's making these fish, ta uh, excuse me, corned beef tacos. Where'd you get fish from? No, I don't know where I got You were talking. You're, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Anyways, uh, anyways, Jose here. Um, he was uh, brought up in a uh, in one of these uh, what do you call these? You know, uh, it, uh, uh, it was picking produce yeah, out yeah. in the field. And they have these colonies, work colonies. Yeah. And his uh, his mother was a single mother, and uh, you know, and he helped out doing this and that. And one of his neighbors was this Irish lady who also was a you know a farm worker. And his mother and this Irish lady got together and they came up with these tacos. And this kind of blew my mind because, you know, I, I never heard of, you know, I, you know, an Irish woman, you know, in Central California, you know, picking fruit and stuff. It's just kind of, no. you know, that, so it just kind of breaks that stereotype. Um, but, you know, the Irish are, you know, into, you know, produce and all that. But <laughs> anyways, um, they came across this taco or they, they made this taco, which is um, a... Uh, uh, it's corned beef out of a can, and Wait what minute, his his is corned beef out of a the, can. The, yeah, what they do is he scrape in the little video. See right there, uh -huh. he sits. It's Hormel. He there's right. a one that comes in a red can that he likes more, <laughs> and he and he scrapes he scrapes it out. And he shreds it, and then we do. Uh, he, do you need the Heinlich? Heinlich. Yeah, he needs a Heinlich anyway. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, so what they do is they shred this stuff, and then. He, he heats these tacos up on that little burner that you just saw, okay, the, uh, the, the, the heat plate there. They get them nice and soft. And he stuffs them, and then he, he puts a tooth with, with the corned beef, and he puts a, uh, a toothpick through them. And then he sits them aside, and he gets them all together. And then what he does is he, he uh, fries it. And we got a little, a little film here that shows you what, actually what he does. Oh, that's cool. So, Jose, this is how you shred the corned beef. This is shredding right? the corned beef, yes. And... Uh, this is gonna go on the tacos? Inside the tacos, yep. Okay. And tell me again, what do you put on this? So it's gonna be corned beef inside the taco with some Parmesan cheese and lettuce and tomato, chopped up lettuce and tomato. And that's it. And of course they're gonna be uh, kind of fried up in this oil here. Yes, they'll be deep fried in the pan there. Um, crispy to your own liking. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, that's you know that's how he gets that going. And I think we uh, we we have another little thing that shows us uh, you know, how we fries them up here. And then, and uh, what he does is he uh, you know they fry them up, and the corned beef is inside there. Okay. And then what they do is he takes them off the fryer or out of the the, the oil there, and then he stuffs it um, you know with you know, the lettuce and tomato, and, and one of the key, key things is Parmesan cheese. Not Mexican cheese, but Parmesan cheese, okay? And they just douse it with that. And that's basically it. I mean, there's no onion, no cilantro, and, and we, I, we got another little thing here we could show you real quick. Mm -hmm. There we go.
Mm. That's a good taco. Yes, it is. Thanks to my friend Jose behind me here. Somewhere behind me here. There he is. Yep. Good taco. But this is the star right here. Two comments. So, number, number one, why is the uh, Dr. Pepper can cut in half? It's for the grease. Ah, okay. Grease. Yeah. Again, we're camping here, and, um, and, and I was very accurate in what I said. He, this is, was a great uh, uh, version of a taco. And I was just, I was, it just really struck me that, uh, you know, his mom, and this, who is obviously Mexican, and the Irish lady got together, and this is what their, what their deal was. And, and now he's 30-some years old, and he's making these tacos for all his cavachos out there, you know, camping, and everyone just loves them. Um, and believe it, they were good the way they are. Um, you know, if you put onion and all that, I, that may make it better, but this is the way they do it. And uh, it just, I, you know, I gotta say thank you, uh, Jose, for uh, turning me on to these, uh, you know, corned beef tacos, so. What does Jose, Jose do? What's he do? Actually, Jose is, uh, you know, works for uh, a big uh, municipal uh, power company or gas company up, up north. Okay. So, uh, no, he's not in the farm work. He, when he was a kid, he worked in yeah. the farms and this and that. And, uh, but he's uh, got a family and very professional, very nice guy. And I, his mom passed away, and I, I, so I, I never, obviously I never met his mom, but I sure would have liked to have uh, met her. But so one, you, one of the things I got to tell you is, uh, in speaking, you know, in, in, in getting this information out of Jose, you know, he was telling me, you know, it was a colony like where everyone had their own house, and it was their house, you know, on this, I don't want to call it a plantation, but on this farm. And the way, way it worked is this was theirs, this was their property. And, and what happens is, uh, if, if uh, they didn't want it anymore, they couldn't sell it. It would have to go to a different farm worker, okay, for another needy family. Right. And if, uh, but what most people do is they just kept it, you know, down the family line, down, right. you know, it, it, you know in, in the inheritance thing. Mm -hmm. And it was their property. They, they own the house, they didn't own the property. But I just thought it was kind of intriguing, you right. know. Anyway, I, I didn't know this about, you know, some of our farm worker communities. I'd like to do a little more research on that and, uh, you know, give some more intricacies on that. But anyways, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. What else we got here? Okay. Uh, looks like you went to a Chinese buffet. Oh, in, uh, yes, I went Gardenville, to a Chinese buffet in the, in the Hunan. Oh, man, this is, this, this, actually this is in Minden, I believe. It's not okay. Gardnerville, it's Minden. Okay. And, but they're kind of one and the same. And this place here, uh, a guy told me about it. It wasn't, a, you know, it wasn't something that I looked up on the computer. And, uh, and uh, anyways, it was like 10 bucks a person. And they had the different soup, that's what you're seeing, the hot and sour soup. And then, you know, they have, you know, two different soups. As you can see, they have all the stuff that you generally find, you know, the, um, the, 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 all the fried stuff. They've got the fried shrimp, you know, they got the chicken skewers, they got the pot stickers, you know, the dumplings. And of course, they've got, you know, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the fruits and, uh, and, you know, the sweet and sour and, and, uh, just about everything, but they had a lot of shrimp stuff. No crab. They actually they had a stuffed crab roll, but I was like, for ten bucks, you can't you can't go wrong here, man. And uh, and it was a, obviously a clean place. And as you can say, they even have tater tots and that kind of stuff. But oh, and they had mussels too. They had uh, a lot of mussels there. So uh, for ten bucks, I said, how do you beat that, man? I got so, a question for you. How long were you out on the road for? Uh, three weeks. And you must have gone to. A dozen restaurants. I got a yeah, I got a dozen. So, yeah. have you seen with this minimum wage thing, uh, the prices of these favorite places that you've probably been to before, the prices have, of, uh, have gone up at all? I haven't noticed. No, not yet. Okay. No, I haven't noticed. All right. Paul Mari out there getting a ticket. Yeah, he's getting a ticket right now. But yeah. that's not yeah, Paul Mari's car. Oh, what he's going to? Yeah, well, it's he's too helping late now. somebody out. Anyway, so, I, anyways, that was that was That's a good place. That's live TV for you, friends. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, that was the Hunan uh, Buffet in Gardnerville, Nevada. Actually, it's Minden, Nevada. Now, I went to another place called Wahib, and this is in Alhambra. Yeah. Okay. Now, have you ever heard of Wahib? Yeah, I've been there. Have there's, you? Yeah, there's a Wahib. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, him and his daughter run it. 
Oh, do you know about Wahid? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, and again, this two is... Two blocks away from them. This is a buffet, and obviously it's Middle Eastern. Uh-huh. It is a great buffet, as you can say. It's a really nice place, uh, uh, and the, the big table that me and my buddy sat around. Ooh, they, that they, looks oh, good. Oh, see, they have Middle Eastern beer. That's Lebanese beer. Yeah, oh, you know Lebanese yeah. beer. Oh, you are quite the knowledge. There's Paul see, Forrester. Yeah, Paul Forrester. You see they have the little Lazy Susan yeah. there, and uh, they got just about everything that you could... That you could imagine, you know. They even got the uh, the the hot garlic, uh, you know, the garlic uh, sauce. It's really garlicky. I love that. As you can see, they, you know, the baba ganoush. They, baba they, ganoush. Yeah, the baba ganoush. They got they got all the great things. You and, know, when I lived down in Alham, and all I gotta say this another thing, this place, twelve bucks. When I lived for down all that. in Alhambra, and I got tired of uh, going to. Burger Continental because oh, the food because the food because uh, the place was dirty. Yeah, I'd go to Wahib's and uh, loved it. Wahib's great great yeah. place. You know, obviously they've got fruit. You can see yeah. they have they have the little uh, the grape leaf rolls and, and all that. You know all the stuff. I, the pictures the pictures can say it better than yeah. I can. Yeah, Wahib's for sure. Wahib. So I didn't know you knew about Wahib's. Oh Wahib. yeah, well, and yeah. it's a deal. It's a deal. And we got two minutes left. Do you so. remember what day you went? Because I think I went you, on a Friday. I, did they do entertainment? At night? They, at night? No, this was during uh, this is the br uh, lunch. Oh, the lunch brunch. And, okay. Yeah, and it was like again, it was uh, eleven ninety five. Because I think they're out there doing the um, the uh, uh, entertainment at night, and I know Dean Lee might oh. know this, but not Sharmut does. Car uh, in the Glendale, oh, the belly dancers at Carousel. The only thing I don't like about Carousel and Glendale is at nine o'clock when they start with the music. It's a prefixed menu, so it's out of meaning that you don't get to pick what you want anymore. Oh, okay. They just bring you what they want. And, well, uh, you know. well, I have to say this. I'm glad that you concur with me on Wahid. Oh, yeah. This is a great, great place. It's in Alhambra, and is it on? Oh, is that Main Street? Is that where? It's Main where? Street. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So, uh, good place. So. Okay. So we got a deal. I'll go to uh, Wahib's because you told me about it. And you're going to go to you up in. Uh, I will. You are going to go to you. Yeah, but you already been to Wahi. So anyway, I know. Hey, but what I've about been Naples there for Rib? What about Naples Rib? I don't know. Do we have time yeah, we, for Naples, Naples Rib? Talk right, about real Naples. quick. There's my nuts available at Gelson's now. Oh, good. All right. So do we have time for Naples Ribs? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So Naples Ribs, obviously in Naples, which is part of Long Beach, uh, he gets his beef ribs from the same place that Robbins gets his uh, beef oh, ribs from. Oh, look at that. From. Yeah. Uh, but this is the party no. pack, which is called the Piglet. Piglet. Piglet pack. Uh -huh. Okay. I think it runs about 60, 70 bucks, and it's definitely feeds six, seven, eight people. Uh, Johnny Yu, who runs the place with his brother David, uh -huh. they have another location in Newport, and then they have one in, but they do oh, a lot of catering. Is that chicken? Uh, that, uh, chicken wings. Uh -huh. Had some scarfed down some of those yesterday. And, and, and this place is called Naples? In, Naples. But in, I'm going to give you a little hint since okay. we only have 30 seconds left of the show. Never have Paul Mari go out and get the food. Really? No. Well, because it comes back a little, uh, a little less than uh, a you little paid less. For. You know what? What's, a what's... little less. <laughs> he said, "This is enough." I said, "Where's the rest?" He goes, "Well, I, you know, I've had to stop at the house and put it in the fridge." Oh, ah, okay. so a little words to the wise. Okay. You know, okay. Paul Mari. But he did us a favor, and I appreciate it. Great. And I'm just kidding. So where is this again, please, for our oh, audience? Oh, it's in uh, Naples. 5800 East Second Street in Long Beach. 5800 East Second Street in Long, Long Beach. Beach. It's in Naples okay. ribs. And um, yeah, I'm working on my five favorite places. I, I'm, I'm changing. I'm my five favorite places to go t to for ribs before you die. Okay. Now next week I'm going to talk about some really good burger joints up on 395. Not Lone Pine though. I'm good. Oh, get the bummer. So, anyways, hey, thanks for watching us here at Rocco's. I'm Mike Bingley, and I'm. Dolomite? Eight, I'm uh, Adolf Coors. Oh, there you go. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful day.